Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my recipe for crab curry. Now, I've never shared a crab curry recipe on my channel. A lot of you guys have asked for the recipe, so here it is today. Now, there are so many different ways you can make crab curry. Some people put coconut milk, some people don't. Some people make it darker, some people make it lighter. Some people use blue crabs. I like to use the snow crabs, but whatever way you make it, it's going to come out delicious if you follow my preparation methods. So let's get into it. So I have all of my fresh seasonings laid out. Now what I'm going to be using today is some garlic, some thick leaf thyme, as well as some hot pepper and a pimento pepper, which is optional. Those are going to be pounded out to make the curry paste. I have some tomatoes, onions, and scallions, some curry powder, as well as some masala. Now my masala is homemade masala. If you want to see how I did that video, please go ahead and check it out on my channel. I'll have it linked right up here on the right hand corner. So once you get all of these things prepped, we can move on to making the crab curry. Now I want to give a big shout out to the people over at Terra for my granite mortar and pestle. If you check out my video on my channel where I unbox it, I'll have a link right up here on the right hand corner. You can see how to prepare it and how to season it before you start to use it. But this is a great tool that I have in my kitchen, especially when making curries to pound all of my seasonings. So in the mortar and pestle, I went in with that garlic, the pimento pepper, the hot pepper, and my thick leaf thyme. I'm gonna go ahead and pound them really well until I get a fine paste. So once you get all of your seasonings pounded out to your liking, you're gonna go ahead and add them into a bowl so we can make the curry paste. When you add those in, you're gonna go in with your curry powder as well as your masala. Now, if you don't have homemade masala, go ahead and head over to buyeasy.com. You can get any West Indian products or pantry staples sent right to your door. It's a great help during this quarantine time or lockdown time where a lot of us cannot get out to the grocery store to go find these things. So once you put these items into the bowl with your seasonings, you're going to put in some water and you're going to mix it up until you get a nice thick paste. Once you get a thick paste, we are officially ready to start chunking the pot for making the crab curry. So we're starting off in a heavy bottom pot and you're going to add in some oil. I'm using canola oil. Once that oil heats up just a little bit, you're going to go in with your sliced onions and sliced scallions. And once you add those onions and scallions into the pot, you're going to saute them for about three to four minutes or until they turn just a little translucent and a little golden brown. Once your onions and scallions have been cooking for a couple of minutes, you're going to go in with your curry paste. A really good idea if you do not want your house to smell like curry and you don't want everything to be like sort of stained with curry, you can go ahead and lower the heat when you're adding in the curry so this way it doesn't splatter everywhere. What happens is when that mixture starts to splatter and the oil gets everywhere, that smell and the vapors also get into the air and that's what makes your house smell like curry. So keep it on a lower heat when you add the curry in and then it could come up to temperature by you raising up the heat just a little bit. Once you add in your curry paste, you're also going to go in with a little bit of salt. Remember when I make any type of curry, I love to put some salt into the curry paste as it cooks so this way it can begin to flavor the dish and give it a great depth of flavor. I also went in with a little bit of black pepper which is totally optional, I just like the added flavor it gives. And once you add those ingredients in, you're going to keep on stirring it and cook this mixture for about 5-6 to six minutes until your curry paste starts to release all of the oil again and it starts to get sort of dry and crumbly. So if you guys look very closely, it's been about 6 minutes and all of that oil has started to separate from the spice mixture and it has dried down really well and started to stick a little bit. Now at this point, I'm going to go in with my crab. As I said today, I'm using snow crab. I've made this with blue crab, I've made this with Dungeness crab, any other type of crab that the grocery store has sold, I've probably tried it with crab curry and they all work perfectly fine. So I have four pieces today, which is about two crabs, two large crabs. It's just my family of four eating today. We're each going to eat one piece. So if you wanted to make a bigger batch, feel free to do so. Just make sure you use a bigger pot so this way you can have space to stir everything around. And if you choose to, you can go ahead and pluck the arms off of the middle part of the crab or the body. So this way you can have more different pieces in the pot. But I like to do it like this just so everything stays intact. Once you add the crab in and you stir it around just a little bit, you're going to go in with your chopped tomatoes. Now a word of advice for you guys, especially during this time when it's hard to get out to the grocery store to always get fresh veggies, is to take your tomatoes and freeze them whole. You wash them, you put them in the freezer, and when you're ready to cook them or use them in a dish, you just take them out of the freezer a few minutes prior and you can chop them up really easily. And what happens is when you add them to dishes, they melt really fast and they create a nice gravy. So I really like that, especially when you put them in the freezer. Now basically once you add the crab, it's going to cook pretty fast because remember any type of seafood cooks really quick. So you basically want to keep it on about a medium, medium high heat and keep turning it around and frying it up or bunjaying it in all of those spices. As you guys can see, it's a little hard to turn because the pieces are big for the pot. 
but it is totally fine. Just keep stirring until everything's coated. So once all of your crab pieces are coated and it's punjade for maybe about four to five minutes, you are ready to go in with some water and some coconut milk. So I'm first gonna go in with my coconut milk and obviously coconut milk is optional. You don't have to put it, but let me tell you something. Whenever you make crab curry, shrimp curry, or any type of seafood curry, the coconut milk truly makes it, gives it such a richness and a delicious flavor. Now at this point, I'm also gonna finish it off with some water. And with crab or shrimp, you only wanna cover it about halfway. The reason being is because the crab is not gonna take long to cook. So if you add too much water, the gravy will be too thin and it will not be enjoyable to soak up with your rice or your roti. So go ahead and just cover it just about halfway. Cover the pot with the lid and you're gonna allow this to simmer on a medium heat for about 10 to 12 minutes or until your crab is cooked through. So my crab has simmered for exactly 11 minutes at this point and 11 minutes was the perfect time for these big crab legs to finish cooking. Obviously if your crab is bigger, you don't wanna cook it longer or if they're smaller like the blue crabs, you cook it for even less time. Just go ahead and gauge it as per the crab that you have. Now my gravy is perfect, this is the way I like it. I like to serve this over rice so I need a good amount of gravy. All you have to do now is taste it for salt, taste it for any other seasonings you may want to adjust. And I like to finish it off with some scallions just to give it a really nice freshness. And that's about it. I'm going to serve it with rice today. I hope you guys enjoyed this quick little video today for my crab curry. And if you decide to try it, make sure to leave your comments down below. Tell me how you enjoyed it. And of course, if you're not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and go ahead and give this video a nice big thumbs up. I'll see you guys again very soon.